Good afternoon. We're going to be looking today at solving real world problems using the zero product property. I apologize my copy here isn't in the best shape, um, but hopefully you can follow along with the example. Um, as always, if you like the channel, go ahead and hit click on that subscribe button so you get updates and leave any feedback or comments down below. And let's go ahead and get started. So it says the height of one diver above the water during a dive can be modeled by the equation h equals negative 4 times the quantity 4t plus 5 times the quantity t minus 3, where h is height in feet and t is time in seconds. Find the time it takes for the diver to reach the water. Okay, so first we have to identify our important information. So it gives us the equation, the height of the diver, when the diver reaches the water, you think about what is that value. So this is talking about the height in feet, okay? And that's where they start out above the water. So the height when the diver reaches the water is when h is equal to zero, because then they're no longer above the water. So in order to find the time it takes for the diver to reach the water, we need to set equal to zero and use the zero product property, just like we were practicing in the previous video. If you missed it, go back and look at the zero product property video. It will explain all of the properties we're about to use. So we're gonna go ahead and solve. When using the zero product property, you set each one of your factors equal to zero. Since negative four cannot be zero, we don't need to use that. So four t plus five or t minus three. We subtract out the 5. I'm going to do my work over here. So 4t plus 5 equals 0. Minus 5, 4t equals negative 5. Divide by 4, t equals negative 5 fourths. Okay, this one's a little bit simpler here. So t minus 3 equals 0. Add 3, t equals 3. So the zeros are when t equals negative 5 fourths and t equals 3. But since time cannot be negative, this does not make sense. When you are solving quadratic functions, oftentimes one of your values will not make sense in the context of the problem. Therefore, the time it takes for the diver to reach the water is three seconds. Okay. Now we can check to see if it's reasonable. We're going to substitute that value of t equals three into our function and see if the value we get is zero. So we're gonna substitute that in and then simplify. So four times three will give us 12. And the three, the parentheses can go away. So here, this will be 12 plus five is 17. Three minus three is zero. Anything times zero is zero. Since the equation is equal to zero for t equals three, the solution is reasonable. The diver will reach the water after three seconds. Because if you were to graph the function, what points would be associated with the zeros? If you remember, the zeros are the same as the x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts would be negative 5 fourths and 3. We found those when we found our zeros. Okay. Let's do another example. So the height of a golf ball after it has been hit from the top of a hill can be modeled by the equation h equals negative eight times the quantity two t minus four times the quantity t plus two, t, I'm sorry, t plus one, where h is the height in feet and t is time in seconds. How long is the ball in the air? So again, we have to think about what are these values? So we know that this is our function Okay, we also know that we want to know how long is it in the air. So really what they're also asking is how long does it take to 
to reach the ground. So we want to know the time it takes for h to be 0. Okay. So we set our equation equal to 0. Since negative 8 cannot be 0, we'll set our other factors equal to 0 and solve. Now I divide t equals 2. Here I subtract and I get t equals negative 1. Now if you recall, t is time. Time cannot be negative. So this does not make sense. You cannot have a negative amount of time. Therefore, this has to be our answer. So it takes the ball two seconds to reach the ground. hope that this helped. Remember when you have a word problem always write your final answer in a sentence referring back to the terms given in the word problem. Your answer should not just be t equals 2. What does that mean for this problem? You could also say the ball is in the air for two seconds. If you want to use the words from the question. That's sometimes helpful for students, right? If you use the words that they give you. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, have a wonderful day.